So what you saying? Judges can see it and be like, hey, you know, you should. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, that's right, not right, what right. they do. Ooh, we from the east to the west, that smoke. Okay, so uh, DJ Envy dressing up like the the officer, trying to use the the Bose accent and everything, right? That hit a, a nerve with Ross. Ross starts uh, stepping it up, taking it to another level, right? Now Envy brings in gunplay, saying, "Yo, Ross, your man, he had a, you know, he had a, a GoFundMe. How you not gonna take care?" of your man and everything like why basically that was his intention it wasn't his his intention to try to bring up uh gunplay's daughter his baby mama whatever uh, what, uh, her his significant other he didn't gunplay, mention his daughter he didn't right, mention his daughter he didn't but because of the emotional time that um gunplay had went through of course you're gonna and right kinda take so. it a certain way yeah definitely he spent what 28 days in the hospital so of course you're yep. gonna take that a different way you know GA. So then that starts yep. to get serious. That starts to get serious. Gunplay ends up uh being on the phone with Charlemagne and, and DJ NV, right? He's recording the conversation. But before we get to that, was DJ NV wrong for bringing in gunplay? Okay, so from what I've seen on the interaction they had, you know, the back and forth they had. They supposedly cool, bro. Like they supposedly cool, but I think yeah, he was like a, a friend of the of the um, program, right? Like yeah, of the program, they, they cool and it almost him. seemed like they knew. I mean, it kind of seems like who was in the middle was Charlemagne. Like Charlemagne's like, yo, yeah. you want what? You know what I'm saying? Because that was Charlemagne at the beginning. So it was like you know because if you look at Gunplay's phone, it says Charlemagne from Breakfast Club. Right. So right. it looks like Charlemagne had to. You know, they hit each he other. He brokered but, that. He basically yeah, brokered he that. Yeah, he definitely brokered that. And so when you look at it, right, you look at DJ Envy, and basically I, I know what I know what DJ Envy was trying to get at, and I know what he was trying to do. Basically, he was trying to attack Rick's character as the boss that takes care of everybody because every time you see him talk, he talks about everybody with me good, everybody, you know, around me good. I'm a boss. I make sure all my people are taken care of. But then, you know what I'm saying? You got, you know, stuff like Meek Mill. That happened. I think they got back together or whatever. And then you have this this whole thing, which I think what he's trying to say is, bro, if that's your man's, there should be no ifs, ands, buts about it. The, the most precious thing to this to, to gunplay would be his daughter and his wife, you know, why should they even have to put up a why, GoFundMe? Why should there even have to be any? Your wife should not even have to be stressed out. She should know she's good because you already had hit me up and said, "Yo, all all medical expenses, bro. Gunplay is supposedly your man's man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he held your, you down. That's he your held man's, you down in and, a lot and, of situations. And gunplay is a dude that." He's he's about his business. I mean, he he went by himself after fifty. You seen what happened? He didn't give a right, fuck. Right. I give him respect for that. A lot of people was laughing at that, but I'm like, no, that's a real motherfucker right there. A real motherfucker don't care if you got thirty niggas with you. If you was talking some shit, I'm gonna go after that ass. And that was gunplay. Gunplay was like uh, Rick Ross's uh, bang him Smurf. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fifty yep. cents. So he he was he was the dude that held it down for you. So why should there be any question in your wife's mind that and it, you know, it, she it would have to it wasn't do a, any it wasn't any bullshit where it was like yo like I should be driving this kind of car or I should be having this kind of chain around my neck no this wasn't. is like serious real life stuff like it's about you know, my daughter so right? on one hand you got gunplay which is going to definitely take it the way he's going to take it and I'm not saying he should have handle it any other way you know you know I, the first thing i would see is just fucking you know what i'm saying i'd see flames it, it, it would be lit as, as soon as i heard that I'd be like yo why the fuck you even bringing my name you shouldn't even be bringing my name into it but i think where envy's mind was at wasn't really to attack gunplay i think where envy's thoughts was at was like bro it it, it was just to show rick ross really wasn't what he's portraying to be yeah you got all this money but you ain't you were not 
dividing it up against your team. You are not if if people are close to you, you know, look at look look at where the closest people to you are in their lives, and they have this emergency, and they're over there stressing. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't have to stress like that since you're the boss that you say that you are. So it wasn't why is, about gunplay. It was about discrediting Ross yes, as like being a real you, motherfucker. Perfect. That's exactly yeah. to break it down. That's exactly what it was. It was more about discrediting Rick Ross versus it being about gunplay. What was crazy though is that like when that phone conversation started, it seemed like gunplay was pretty calm. He was all like, What do I gotta do with it, my brother? You know, like he's like, yeah. Why are you bringing me up? And then next but as you soon know, as he, he just said went, his daughter, as soon as he mentioned the daughter's name you know i'll smack the shit out of you right because yeah, yeah, exactly. the emotion he went, just he saying his daughter, 100 right there right there and, and rightfully so you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying because it's like bro you know what i'm saying like she you know once he started breaking down she had a heart you know what i'm saying once right. he started breaking down it was it was his own traumas that he was going through and like he remembers exactly. that and it's like kind of like wow you we really going back and forth about this but at the same time I'm not judging gunplay or his situation about it. It does really do show the character of Rick Ross because there shouldn't have been no, I mean, even if he ended up paying for it at the end for her to even feel that she needed to go get a GoFundMe, that means that I don't think there was anybody offering help at right. the time. You know what I'm saying? There was, there wasn't help to be found. Right. So then Gun, they they said, uh, Charlemagne and Envy said that they were on the phone 10 minutes after that recorded conversation, right? Uh, gunplay and, and, and all of them were on the phone together for like 10 more minutes and things got ironed out, things seemed to be okay. So, why would gunplay still put that out? Do you think that he got a call from Ross and was like, yo, yeah, put that out? Or because w- I don't know what gunplay make you said feel was away? That- I would make me feel a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't that get we, me wrong. We, we was cool. So I thought we was cool, but you was recording the conversation to begin with, and I didn't even know about it. And then after we had fixed things, you still put out the conversation. So yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, to me, to me, to me, like I said, I just think Gunplay's emotions were involved. And where where it was at was like, he's he said, I want a public apology. and he just i think maybe he was recording that for that why he put it out it, 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 there might be some influence you know outside influences you know what i'm saying like you're saying like what you just said to me i th- i I, th- I think you got a point there because i i don't see why it would get to that you know if they was cool but then again i don't know gunplay like that you know what i mean i don't right, know why he right. put it out it just could have been something where he was protecting uh, i can't say protecting himself yeah i really don't know man that that that's really that's really where I, I can't even give judgment on. I could just say, yeah, man, he jumped the gun on that. He jumped the gun on that. But look where it went. Look where it's going. I mean, because right. now we got, you know, look at this. Let's get let's get to it. Because w- what happened after he recorded that and put it out, it, you know, Envy started what? Envy started feeling away. And then Envy was like, oh, okay, I could get petty too. And he started, I think they were. I would say they were. What, what could you consider them threats, or could you consider it cap? You know what I'm saying? Like he, you know, he pump fake. And and yeah. he started pump faking. And he started pump faking because what it seems like is nobody's ever heard of a district attorney calling envy and i don't see why a district attorney would do that either way. You know what I'm saying? Seeing that going on because you would have to put. They can't. Uh, they can't solicit anything like that you know they can't solicit for you to come in and do all of that stuff unless officers or whatever get involved that's not that's not up to them to solicit that you know what i'm saying because you got two personalities going back and forth and it's on social media who knows what's real and who knows what's not who knows if that was in stage so why would they solicit something like that you know there is the hip-hop police right so there are people that are constantly watching social media or whatever things that are going on in hip hop that may uh, equal a crime. So I, I do think that it's possible that they were watching that, but I would feel like the officers would reach out first, but yeah. to have the DA that's my point. The DA, just so you directly? see what I'm saying? That's yeah, exactly what like I was saying. Like the I officers 
would come and investigate. Right. So because a DA ain't going to do that. Right. So Envy was, was, you know, on the breakfast club and he said that basically he kind of threatened like, yo, this is punishable by five years. Cause it's illegal for you to record a conversation without somebody knowing. Yeah. Right? I don't think he, he was going to do anything with it. I think what he was saying was, yo, what you're doing, this could happen. And I already got people hitting me up. So he pump fake, like keep it he was up. He trying to make him look bad. He was trying to make I don't him think look bad. I don't think it was that. I think it was a pump fake of keep this up. There might be other recordings. I mean, there might be other conversations he thought it recorded maybe. So it, he pump faked. I feel like the pump fake was, yo, end this chaos because I could just easily tell him, okay, we could do this. Let, Ooh, let me open a case. Play. Well, and anyway, do you think that that's against hip hop rules? Well, it's like we just said, man, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no anything anymore. The I OG mean, rules, I would say, is probably against the rules, but in 2023, it would be. In probably 2023, not. In 2023, there's no rules. There's no rules. Right. You could be a snitch. You can be a rat. You could be a cop and act like you sold drugs. Uh, you could be a CO and act like you sold drugs. You can be whatever. You could be a fucking librarian and act like you sold drugs. And you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you could be all of that, and it's okay as long as you know how to rap. Moving on. So then... Um, Today, Gunplay ends up sending out a cease and desist, right? With his uh, his woman. Yeah, let me um, can you get that on? Okay. So she she posts this letter of cease and desist, right? Directed to Rashawn Casey, who is DJ Envy. Now, the caption, she says, Now, Rashawn Casey at DJ Envy, I told you I'll go to war about my family. See, she really felt away about him bringing up the whole situation with the GoFundMe. Is she really going at him now? Yes. I mean, and rightfully so. That's 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 Mama Dukes. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> Nothing like right. Mama Dukes. You can't even bring up something that even that that even sounds like the situation without a without a mother going off. And you know right, right. it's different she, rules for moms. It's different rules for moms. <laughs> she's seen the pump fake. She's seen it. She's like, yo, yep. you capping. And and she a smart woman and she went and did this. I just found it very interesting that not one federal or state attorney officer had any knowledge of this alleged phone call, as well as advising me to show uh, to now take legal actions against you for falsifying an investigation and slander. Oh shit. Wait, wait, wait. So she's saying she's gonna take action? Or they're they gonna advised take her to. Well, she already knew automatically. Well, think about it. How most people wouldn't know how to even navigate through that situation and see if he was capping. Now, if you ever been through the system, you already know, bro, I'm going to get talked to by investigators before no DA is going to call. No DA is going to call. I mean, it just so she's seen through that right away, because why would the district? That's not their job. Their job is to get uh, whatever evidence, you know, investigators got. And then they file the charges. And then, you know, they say whether they're going to actually see it through you get what i'm trying to say why right, would they right. call dj envy first that's not the way the process works man the process don't work like that so what you saying judges can see it and be like hey you know you should <laughs> you know what i mean come on man like that's right, not right, what right. they do oh he can't talk about rick ross related to uh the medical care of my client's infant child this is this the, these are the weeds man this is the this is what this is the messy this is the messy you know what I'm saying? This, is, this, this is getting messy. Over, all of this over some fucking car promotion. Like, do you realize but how it started, crazy this is? But see this? It started <laughs> with Ross. And it ends up all the way over here. Now, you can see their loyalty to Ross. I don't know. But, bro, this is Why they would even ego. bring up Rick Ross. This, no, this it all is. became ego that created issue after issue after issue that led down to now lawsuits and shit like that's ridiculous bro like i totally get why everybody is mad but do you see like the source of the issue was something so petty so small that was really just bullshit to begin well, think with. about this you got <laughs> other families getting involved in this it was a it was about two men and their cars Okay, it's about <laughs> two men and their fucking Hot Wheels, whatever. Right. You know, it's about two fucking trucks. men 
and they fucking Tonka trucks and micro machines. They fucking hoopty, whatever the fuck you want to call. It was about two fucking men that basically wanted to prove they had more meat in the tank than the other one did. And it just has me dying because it's like, bro, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> it's really fucking stupid. Right. If you look at it, at the end of the day, this is fucking stupid. Look at how far it's gone. Now, do I feel like Envy went too far? I know where his head was at. I can't say he did or he didn't. I'm just saying from the outside looking in, I know there was no malicious intent towards the Moraleses. Right. I, 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 I really feel that. Now, I can't tell Gunplay how to feel. But right. I can say from the outside looking in, not having any horse in this race or whatever you know i honestly can sit there and say that it, it i mean it looked like he tried to th it did look like envy did try to thread that needle real tightly because it, he didn't bring up the daughter but he brought up the uh the gofundme right saying you know See, but the thing is though is like i felt like envy but given that this was after the whole situation where the phone conversation was already released and everything. The way that he phrased it, the apology, he phrased it wrong though. He said that oh if no, his, his, his wife apology felt some now type his of apology, way, I that, do that, that apology was corny. That apology was corny. I would have looked right. at the camera and said, "Yo, gunplay, you been you you been on the channel. I fuck with you. I fuck with you. I, I fuck with you. You know, I just fuck with you as a person. I really sincerely apologize, and I really regret." that it affected your wife in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because I know you guys was going through a lot of stuff. I mean, your baby girl, I hope she's okay. She's in my prayers. I really apologize. And I shouldn't have said what I said. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. But also, you know? he could explain himself to say that this was not really about you. It was about Ross. Yeah. Because I feel like, yo, you should take care of your people, right? If you're flexing all this money, then he I feel like you should take care of your people. He could have explained it in a way better way, but to keep saying, because like Charlemagne even called him out. Charlemagne was like, Not yo, wait, why don't you apologize? And he kept on bringing it up. And then and he was like, I already said, if she felt the way, it's like, come and, on, you and know. And we already know away. that that is not an apology. It's not right. an apology. If if I offended anybody. As a husband, nothing is worse than seeing your wife upset, especially over something somebody else did. You know, so definitely. Not only that, twice. <laughs> twice, bro. Like she, you know, like seeing her go through the stress, you know, because of the daughter. And then right. doing the GoFundMe page. And then the stresses of coming up with the money, you know, it, 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 it it, it Nobody likes asking for money too. Yeah, Look at that uh, first people. comment though. Look at the first comment. Right, Scroll down a little comment. bit. It says Bonnie yeah. Peaches. It's, it's attention, attention you, you want. want. Yeah, go ahead. Has to be because nothing he said was disrespectful to your family. Maybe y'all just can't handle the truth that Rick Ross ain't as much of a friend as you thought. Because if I'm rich as fuck, like Rick, my friend, sick child, would have had a check written so fast, like, here, help your baby. But he didn't because he didn't care. But DJ Envy is where your focus is instead of the fact motherfuckers that could easily pay for the surgery that's your friend didn't help sounds like y'all looking for sympathy that your own friend didn't have okay so and that was wow. dj envy's pretty much in intention what when he, he brought harsh. up yes and that's what he was but i mean that was kind of harsh i mean i think that could have been worded differently but i it's it's you know the sympathy that rick ross didn't have he, he it didn't seem like he did because like i said whether his his wife his wife feeling the way she felt is normal you know what i'm saying but me if we're boys bro you you basically gonna know my kids is sick you know something's wrong you know what i'm saying i mean if there's something wrong with my kid or my child you're gonna know about it and i wouldn't expect to have to ask you if you had it and vice versa you shouldn't have to expect to ask me especially if we have castles with three swimming pools and we're over there you know showing this stuff all over social media um you wouldn't expect that you know what i mean so if we all know what envy's intention was that's what i'm saying by being neutral in the situation and just looking from the outside in it's something that we all think that 
Yeah, you should. He, there, there shouldn't have been a worry in your body. It sh- you should. The only thing that you would have to worry about is is the child going to pull through with all the procedures and stuff that they have to take. And, you know, are the procedures going to cause long lasting effects or are there going to be other issues? You know, it should just, you, you should only have to worry about your child getting better, not about the bills that, you know what I'm saying? All about these huge bills. If you can actually afford to get your child better, you know, that right. part should have been taken care of. The only worry you should have as a friend of especially somebody with that kind of money. Now, does Rick Ross owe anybody anything? No, but when you're sitting there publicly boasting about the money you got and everybody's taken care of underneath your umbrella, which you would think gunplay would be number one. Seriously, you would think gunplay would be number one. You know what I mean? As many times as he's, you know what I'm saying, dumb for you, you would think that he'd be There's number one and his family. Right? There's different yep. standards. There's technically he doesn't owe anybody anything, right? Yep. And then there's real motherfucker standards where it's like, if you a real dude, this is what you do. That he claims to be. That's right. That's, where that's everybody. True. True. That, so that's why I'm saying technically he doesn't owe anybody, but he is out there every day claiming to be that. That's all that's he true. talk about. If you if make you, if you make claims that like you know you take care of your people then you do need to be held to those standards then. If you make claims that you're a vegan and people see you sitting there shoveling pork and chicken (laughs) and, you know what I'm saying, eating sushi, you know, come on. People are going to call you out on it, and rightfully so. It's like, bro, you a vegan? You know, you you still got meat in your teeth. I think it's still alive. I can still see it squirming, trying to get out your mouth. You feel me? So that's what I'm trying to say, and this is no pun on Rick Ross's weight or anything like that. I'm just trying to say, like, bro, (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? If you claim to be this, and that's and you and you go publicly with it, so everybody in the world can see. So the world has every right to judge you on that. And right. I think that's what Envy was doing. He was just basically trying to say, bro, you ain't that real dude that you try to claim to be. You might be rich, but you ain't loyal. At the end of the day, that's right. what it breaks down to. Last thoughts about this whole situation before we move on. If you're saying that it was cool at the end and they and they chopped it up, because I remember seeing him saying I thought it was good, and then now this comes out because right. that's what they said that it was good, and then all of a sudden this came out. But that's I think why the reason- I understand for envy though, like how you would really feel away. It's like I thought you was real. I thought that we we had squashed it and stuff. But next thing you know, I find out you was recording the conversation all along. Not but, just that, but you put it out. But. Here's the thing. Now, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Think or was this. was Gunplay's Envy wife like, never, nah, fuck that, put that nah, out. Nah, think about this. <laughs> think about this. What was Gunplay's end game? A public apology. He never got that, and still he didn't get it. That's true. That's not a public apology. What he gave. Well, and then remember, Envy did and Charlamagne had a push. Right, no, Charlamagne but, but, had a push Envy, for it. Envy did say that, oh, you know, I wasn't on the radio after we had that conversation, so I couldn't apologize. I thought that was bullshit because you could have took you the get on media, your phone, right? Get on your phone, record a you, video of yourself saying, yep, yo, my listen, bad. I'm out I was right wrong. now. Yeah, and you could, you could, you, you could be like, listen, I'm not at the at the station, and the first thing on my mind is this, and I want to get this off my chest. And issue the apology. And that's it. And and that would have came from a place of, damn, dude didn't even wait. Dude just did it. Like that's, and he got you know 2. what I'm saying? 2, he got 2.2 million followers on IG. So don't tell me that the impact wouldn't have been big. People would have been running the story, him apologizing, everything. It would have got out there still. It, it, it's know? a public apology. And at the yeah. end of the day, if gunplay felt away or whatever, you know, you, you, you could have issued that and then, and then talked about it on when you got back on the air so would the, the public apology would have been aired twice where it would have been on the bigger platform so it's not like well i didn't want that public apology i wanted one on the breakfast club but well, guess what they're doing an actual segment on the apology as soon as he gets back so oh, it's going to be publicized even bigger so it's going to be on the bigger platform as well so if he would have done that i i feel Gunplay and his wife 
wouldn't feel the way they felt, you know? Because like I said, I, I I feel like he didn't give an apology. I felt like Charlemagne had to pull it out of him and it wasn't even an apology. That if, that, that word if, that right there voids everything. If, no, it should be I. Get rid of the F because the F is just for fuck you. I don't, I, I don't give a fuck about this. It should be I. Apologize. Not if I offended somebody. I, you know what I'm saying? No. It's yeah, and I think that he got on some shit too where he said that I'm not going to over apologize. And, and nobody was asking you to, bro. No, 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 no. Because when, when uh, uh, Charlemagne was pushing him so much, he was like, I told you I'm not going to over apologize. Yeah, but you didn't. Uh, that's the problem, though. All you have to do is just start the fucking conversation with I apologize. Not if I offended anybody. It right. should just be I apologize for the statements that I made or for how out of hand it got. You know, it really wasn't my intentions. And, and you can, you know, explain or not explain. But as, as long as there's no if in it. If, you I know what I'm saying? Like it's, 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 like it's coming from a place of ego at that point. Because he's a he's a family man. He has a wife. He has a child. So he knows. Put, put yourself in that position. Exactly. Well, I think the reason why you're right with the ego i think the reason why he didn't want to look like he was over apologizing because he didn't want to look like the i'll slap the shit out of you is the reason mm, why he's over apologizing. you get what i'm saying that's a good that. point that's, that's a good point. where that i think that's where his head was at with that like damn because you know what it would have been yo damn envy scared he's shaking in his boots after that you know what i'm saying that's why he's over there sucking his balls and shit you know what i'm saying right, he's right, over there sucking right. his dude you, you get what I'm saying? So I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. that came from. I think it came from that whole... See, that, that's, a, that's a problem that you always got to look at so many different angles. Well, when you're in the public how, eye. Right, right. In the public eye. Instead of doing what is right, though. That, that's, that's what sucks, right? That About yeah. being a public figure that you... It's not like... It's just you and me behind the scenes and we just, you know, having a real conversation and then I'm, I'm looking at you as another human being and I'm yep. making it right. You yeah, got to exactly. keep on thinking like how... Oh, the the news is good. Uh, the people are gonna troll me. They're gonna come in with this narrative that yo, I was scared of gunplay. He was really gonna smack me. So then I didn't want to say yeah. sorry. <laughs> you know what but I mean? But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's today's news and it's going tomorrow because the way that we're fed this stuff. I mean, we were just right. talk about exactly. Rick Ross getting away with you know being you know affiliated with law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, CO is a is a form of law enforcement. It's what happens to the to the criminal after he is charged and convicted. And you know, it's it's a long form of law enforcement because the cops they they just gotta put the cuffs on you, bring you in, and charge. You know what I'm saying? Send you to court, you get charged, and all of that. The COs is living with you, right? You that's feel true. me? So, and that's, that's the reason why. I, I feel the way I feel because I've lived under their rule, bro. And they it's just some fuck shit. So what basically what I'm trying to say to you is if Rick Ross got away with that, I mean, I don't see why Envy should be so nervous about looking like he's over apologizing. That's all I'm saying. 